Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dugo, the Nootropic Reviewer, and during this video we're talking about Shilajit. I just took a few drops of it prior to shooting this video because when I ingest Shilajit, I instantly feel a little bit more relaxed. And it's always interesting when there's a nootropic supplement out there that can naturally boost testosterone levels while at the same time being healthy for you, boosting your energy levels, and helping you with relaxation. I originally started taking Shilajit actually in uh, the capsule or the powder form, and then I had learned that I do get better results from so taking it in drop form. And what you can expect from this nootropic supplement is a slight boost of motivation, slight boost of testosterone while feeling at the same time somewhat grounded versus ashwagandha they say does boost testosterone levels but at the same time can be quite demotivating after ingestion. But quite honestly there's a good chance that you may just not notice Shilajit working and for that reason it's one of the supplements that is good yet it would not go under my top 10 nootropics because there are other nootropics that are just simply more effective. So it works but I think Shilajit is going to be appropriate for somebody just very conservative because of the fact that this is a very safe nootropic. If you look up on side effects there's virtually none and people notice very different benefits. Some people feel a lot more relaxed. Some people are more likely to feel that testosterone boost or the libido boost or some of the signs of having higher testosterone levels. Like when you're able to sleep a little bit less, you're feeling cognitively sharper. That's how I felt when I was on TRT, for example. Shilajit doesn't come anywhere close to that, but where I notice it working is specifically around fatigue and energy production. And for that reason, I specifically like taking it a pre-workout because you can take it fast and you can also take it in a fed state. And something I really appreciate about Shilajit is every year I look at the literature and there's a new study showing it can have some sort of benefit, whether it's a, a benefit with bone density, whether it's a benefit with boosting CoQ10. And even it being so beneficial if you're intermittent fasting, like I intermittent fast during the day and I notice that when I ingest Shilajit, I'm able to eliminate that irritability that you typically get during a fasting period. I'm able to feel a lot happier. I'm able to suppress my appetite so I can push my fasting period a little bit longer. As a matter of fact, if you haven't seen results with Shilajit, I would strongly recommend you to try it in a fasting period. You're more likely to see some sort of benefit or that's been my experience. But I have found that you do need to take a lot more than the recommended dose for it to be noticeable. I'm not recommending you to do this, but this was the experience experience for me. Most of the time that you'll see Shilajit recommended is in a serving size of 200 milligrams once a day or 200 milligrams twice a day. I had to bump it up to take about one gram per day divided by 500 milligrams two times a day and that's when I really started to notice the benefits and that's also one of the reasons why I'm a little bit apprehensive about using Shilajit every single day. However, something interesting was from that megadose experience, I didn't really notice any side effects. I expected to feel something so it seems like a nootropic supplement. Perhaps the more you take, uh, the more likely you are to respond to it because I felt something at that dose. And Shilaji does go really nice with other nootropic supplements out there. I really like it. I'm using it along with Tonkat Alley if I want that energy boost and that testosterone boost. And other individuals like using Shilaji along with Rodeo Rosea to really help them to eliminate stress and further reduce anxiety levels. Also pre-workout, it's fantastic because you feel centered, you feel grounded. At the same time, it doesn't do anything funny with your heart rate. And with some other nootropics out there, you ingest them pre-workout, then your heart rate gets elevated, then you're exercising with a little bit of concern. You don't have that experience with Shilaji. You feel healthier, you feel a little bit calmer, you feel a little bit sharper. I would be comfortable recommending Shilajit to my family, which goes to show you just how much I have trust in this product. So major benefit number one is the increase of testosterone levels. As shown in this study over here, clinical evaluation of purified Shilajit on testosterone levels in healthy volunteers. And this is a great study because they took a very practical dose of 250 milligrams twice a day. And they found that treatment with Shilajit for consecutive 90 days revealed that it significantly increased total testosterone, free testosterone, because that's important compared with placebo. However, this study was done on individuals between 45 to 55 years old. However, I'll show you something really neat in benefit number two, and that's increased muscle strength. And as shown in this study over here, they took 63 recreational active men, just around 21 years old, and the subjects saw the exact results that we were hoping for. And it demonstrated that the eight weeks they were ingesting the Primavi Shilajit supplementation at 500 milligrams once a day promoted the retention of maximal muscular strength following the fatiguing protocol and decreased baseline. However, they had one group that was taking a very low dose of Shilajit and the results that that group saw was very similar to the placebo group, which goes to show you, you may just need a really high dose of Shilajit or a decent serving for it to actually work. But I really appreciate the study because they took healthy young individuals that were already somewhat fatigued from exercising. It's not like they took fresh individuals, gave them some Shilajit. No, they were fatigued and then they tested the results after Shilajit ingestion. The third benefit is healing chronic fatigue syndrome, which speaks for itself extreme tiredness, demotivation happening as a result of you being so tired. 
you can think of it like being awake but not being awake. And the time that I could really relate to that was when I took time off of an ADHD med that I was on, which was Concerta. So when you're on something like that, which really does put you in such an alert and a stimulated state, the time off of it, you experience withdrawals you and you feel fatigued. So I wish I knew about Shilajit back then, but that's exactly what this does. If you're somebody that may be finding yourself unproductive, always being tired and being low of energy, then Shilajit may actually be somewhat of a remedy. And researchers have found that the ingestion of Shilajit can help to reduce or eliminate altogether chronic fatigue syndrome. And how that happens can be through a number of factors, insulin sensitivity being one, helping with overall mitochondria function. And another great supplement to help you to eliminate or reduce fatigue would be rhodiola rosea, which I talked about in this video over here. However, I found that rhodiola rosea was pretty short lasting, so you needed to take it twice a day. Whereas, however, Shilajit, it may have some promise as it seems like a supplement that you just don't get that short term boost, but you seem to get more of a boost that can last the whole day. And benefit number four is that Shilajit can be very good with aging. Actually, it's full of minerals and it has one thing specifically which is pretty hard to find through supplements or through diets and that's called fulvic acid. What is fulvic acid? They call it the elixir of life. It's found in the highly nutritious layer of the earth and this layer is responsible for feeding plants and ensures that they grow strong and they grow healthy. And there's so many benefits to fulvic acid. For one, the fact that it's highly effective at neutralizing and detoxifying harmful toxins and pollutants including heavy metals such as lead and mercury and an increased consumption of fulvic acid is often responsible for you having better cardio. And benefit number five is that it can help anyone that may have iron deficiency. And regular Shilajit consumption has been linked with higher iron levels and iron deficiency is becoming very common right now. Some of the symptoms that people may not pay attention to are uh, cold hands, also irritability, and most notably is gonna be the low energy levels. And some other symptoms of iron deficiency can be irregular heartbeats and having a very low tolerance to pain. However, if you're somebody with um, higher iron levels, if you have been tested, then I may consider staying away from Shilajit because it does boost iron levels quite significantly, but to get iron through your diet, you're gonna have to consume some foods like spinach, uh, dark leafy green vegetables, red meat, and a lot of nuts. And benefit number six is that Shilajit can help with male infertility. In one study, 60 infertile men took Shilajit twice a day for 90 days after meals. And at the end of the 90 day period, more than 60% of the study participants showed an increase in total sperm count. And it's important to note that Shilajit has so many more benefits around this. There is some talk about it potentially helping with the slowdown of Alzheimer's. A very common misconception about Shilajit consumption is that it's most commonly used to just to improve male sexual health. And this is absolutely not true. There are a lot of benefits with females. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of studies which were only done on females and females were the only gender to see results. Some of the benefits that females may experience are better helping them to regulate their menstrual cycle, uh, better helping their energy levels, preventing certain types of cancer, preventing Alzheimer's or cognitive issues, um, helping with boosting immunity, promoting bone growth, and it's really great for maintaining skin health. Irritability and headaches seem to be the two most common side effects, but even those, they are very uncommon. And I will warn you that the form of Shilajit that you consume it in does matter. Most of the individuals that had any sort of negative, severe reaction to taking Shilajit were individuals that were taking it in its raw form. So I would stay clear of the raw form, get off started with the capsules or the powder form. You may want to start off with capsule form as you can conveniently measure just how much to take. And then gradually, maybe you want to try powders so you can space up the dosage or go to droppers. Like I've seen really good results with the droppers. And I I just find that it hits me a lot faster. Hope you found this informative and if you did, consider subscribing, drop a like and, and if you'd like to chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can do so over on Patreon or you can send me a direct message on Instagram and be sure to visit our Discord server which has a 24-7 chat room. We're answering questions in a time-sensitive fashion. We're having a lot of fun. I thank you for your interest in nootropics and I look forward to seeing you all next time.